problem five from this year's IMO was really, really nice. If you haven't seen it before, you'll love it. It's a really cool problem, not just because it's about ninjas. It's really what an IMO problem should be. Easy to understand, but a challenge to solve. Less than 20% of the IMO competitors got the full seven marks. Most got zero. And in case you don't know much about IMO, these kids are really, really good at maths. The problem statement is kind of long, but it's not that hard to see what's going on once we read it. Let n be a positive integer. A Japanese triangle consists of 1 plus 2 plus dot dot n circles arranged in an equilateral triangular shape, such that for each i from 1 to n, the i throw contains exactly i circles, exactly one of which is coloured red. A ninja path in a Japanese triangle is a sequence of n circles, obtained by starting in the top row then repeatedly going from a circle to one of the two circles immediately below it and finishing in the bottom row. Here is an example of a Japanese triangle with n equals 6 along with the ninja path in that triangle containing two red circles. In terms of n, find the greatest k such that in each Japanese triangle there is a ninja path containing at least k red circles. So n rows, one red circle per row and the ninja path. It's probably just that last sentence that takes a little bit of digesting. We're asked for the greatest K, such that in each Japanese triangle, there is a ninja path containing at least K red circles. For example, when N equals six, if we look at the Japanese triangle in the example, I can already see a ninja path containing four red circles. So K equals four. But is that the case for every Japanese triangle with six rows? If not, is there always a ninja path with k equals three red circles? Then we want to find the greatest k such that no matter the triangle, it is always possible to find a path with k red circles. Then we move on from six rows, generalizing to n rows, so that if you gave me a Japanese triangle with a hundred rows, I could tell you that there must be a ninja path containing k equals red circles. Because you want to find the greatest number of circles for any given triangle, it makes sense to consider the worst possible triangle. And by worst case, I mean a Japanese triangle where it's not easy to find a ninja path through lots of red circles. Best case, for example, would be something like this, where all the red circles conveniently lie on a single ninja path. But what would the worst case look like? Now, my first thought was to put half the red circles on one outer diagonal, and the other half on the opposite diagonal like this. So if you take any ninja path to the left, you're gonna miss all the red circles over to the right and vice versa. The greatest value of K in this case would be something like um, half of N or half of N plus one. Now I actually spent a fair bit of time trying to prove that this arrangement was the worst possible case. But after some time, I realized that it wasn't. The worst case is actually much, much worse. So the way I discovered it, and often this is the best way with these combinatorics problems, is just to start investigating some small cases. And even starting from n is equal to one, uh, which is a triangle with one row. Because that row must have one red circle, clearly k is equal to one. When n is two, if we have two rows, it's not hard to see k is always going to be two. If n is three, then using this arrangement, we can see that K is still going to be two, okay? We can prevent a ninja path with three circles. So the greatest K for all triangles is going to be K equals two. Um, but that's the actual only arrangement that would give K equals two, or it's reflection. So when we go to N equals four, it's always going to be possible to have a path going through three circles. Building on that worst case arrangement with three rows, no matter where I put a red circle in the fourth row, you're always gonna have a path going through three red circles. Building up to n equals five, I can keep k to three by placing a red circle uh, here using my original strategy of placing on the outside diagonals, but that's not going to work for n equals six because we can see this triangle would have a path with four red circles. But here, I can limit k to three. And that helps to see how we can really build up the worst case triangle. It's just by putting the next red circle just out of reach of the previous one. So continuing to the seventh row, what we have now is that any ninja path could only pass through 
one red circle from each of these rows from four to seven. And then starting again in row eight, going all the way down to row 15, any ninja path could only pass through exactly one of those red circles. In general, using this arrangement, we can restrict any ninja path to only pass through one red circle from rows two to the M to two to the M plus one minus one. And this means that our solution, uh, the greatest number of red circles K that must exist on a ninja path depends entirely on the largest power of two less than N. If we let uh, two to the M be the largest power of two less than N, then our greatest value of K is equal to M plus one. Okay, we have plus one because the red circle in the top row, which is um, the two to the zeroth row, counts on our ninja path. We wanna express this as a function of N. So using a base two log, we have um, the floor of the log base two of N plus one. So for me, seeing that log base two of n in the result was quite surprising. Uh, quite nice, but quite surprising. I'm not sure what you think, if that's what you predicted or not. So if you did give me a ninja triangle with a hundred rows, uh, I could find you a ninja path with seven red triangles. Not a lot, is it? But with that construction, we're able to limit uh, one red circle per each power of two. But this is an Olympiad problem and I should prove this construction really is the worst case and that all Japanese triangles do in fact have a ninja path with k equals this many red triangles. So I'm going to use a proof by induction on m where m, uh, so 2 to the m is the largest power of 2 less than the number of rows n. And the statement I'm going to prove by induction is that the worst case Japanese triangle uh, with 2m minus 1 rows, that is the triangle that minimizes the greatest number of red circles k, must have ninja paths with m red circles ending at every circle uh, in the 2m minus 1th row. And I know that might seem a bit random, like where did this come from? So this is where it came from. If we have a look at this diagram, where the number in each circle represents the the greatest number of red circles on a ninja path leading to that circle. So there are ninja paths with two red circles ending at all the circles in the third row and ninja paths with three red circles ending at all circles in the seventh row, which makes it easy to get a four red circles in the eighth row because I just put a red circle anywhere and bang, there we are. So that's the idea of this statement that we're trying to prove. If we start with the base case when M is one, well, that will give us the first row, which does have one red triangle, so that's good. The assumption is say for M equals P, then for M equals P plus one, uh, we must prove that there must be ninja parts with P plus one red circles in every circle in the last row, which are the two P plus one th minus one th row. So it's the next power of two. If we look at this row, the two to the pth row, uh, because there must be a red circle in that row, there must be a ninja path with p plus one red circles going to that circle. And below this circle, we, we cannot use any of the circles in that equilateral triangle. Because we're trying to minimize the number of red circles on any ninja path, we don't want to put any red circles in this equilateral triangle. So we're forced to place one red circle in each of the remaining diagonals, and there is two to the p minus one of these diagonals. With that, that gives the two p plus one minus one row, with every circle being the end of a ninja path with p plus one red circles. So that is the uh, proof by induction that in fact the worst case Japanese triangle with two to the m minus one rows must have ninja paths with m red circles ending at every circle in the 2 to the m minus 1th row. And now when we place a red circle anywhere in the next row, the 2 to the mth row, we get a ninja path with m plus 1 red circles, which proves our lower bound of log 2 floor of n plus 1. Of course there's other ways to do the proof, but that was the way that makes sense to me. Nice problem, right?